Hi, I got an email from a viewer and I thought it'd be fun to go through a few back of the envelope calculations of whether or not it's possible to actually use the Starlink satellite system to actually capture solar power and beam it back to Earth. I know it's not technically possible, so it's an interesting question. So just for shits and giggles, I thought we'd just go through the calculations because uh, here's the uh, letter from the viewer. Hi, Dave. Uh, Semi-long-time viewer of the channel, especially during college. Hi to all my uh, viewers who are uh, studying. Um, I think it's like 30 percent of my 20 30 percent i don't know i have to do that survey thing um quite a significant portion of my audience are uh, college and other uh, technical students i was recently contacted by a recruiter from reflect orbital regarding a manufacturing position you remember my reflect orbital busted video i'll link it in if you haven't seen it it's where this company reflect orbital um started by a fellow youtuber actually i wonder what they're doing now <laughs> they're probably still milking the cash cow moo but anyway um though we're going to put satellites in orbit with these big mylar solar mirrors on them that we're going to reflect light down to the ground and to point those at like existing solar farms and then capture the energy from the reflected sunlight. It turns out, well, based on my uh, calculations, you'd only get about five milliwatts per square meter. Milliwatts per square meter, not watts, <laughs> not kilowatts, milliwatts per square meter. That wouldn't even r run the residual power of the inverters required to capture that sort of energy from the solar panel. So it's just completely busted. Dumbest idea ever, but they're probably still going milking some investor cash cow that they've still got. Anyway, um, I started looking into them and the product uh, they wanted to create and didn't seem to add up in various ways. So my viewer is clued in here. I was more convinced after watching your video on the company that wasn't a good business case. I would also argue the size and weather satellite would be well beyond the 1C satellite they think they'll be able to get to. The size in the satellite in initial uh, 10 year lifespan will require attitude keeping fuel radiators solar reaction wheels etc but it got me thinking about Starlink I would like to request a video and here it is in a video exploring how much energy back of the envelope calculation Starlink could generate and beam to earth for electricity well we're not actually going to do energy here we're going to do power so uh, let's uh, just to make um, things easier so um, yeah I've done a video on the difference between energy and power Big difference. Um, it would be very interesting to see the figure given the number of satellites currently in orbit and how many they plan uh, to use, not to mention Starlink competitors. If all of the companies combine their resources to beam energy to Earth, if Starlink could beam energy, uh, would it be would it outcompete the revenue you calculated for Reflect Orbital? Well, I'm not going to go into a revenue calculation. I'm just going to see in this uh, thing, in the numbers here, we're going to see if it's uh, possible to actually be even in the ballpark of simply putting solar panels on your roof <laughs> of your house. So let's go. Starlink Wireless Energy. Yes, it's just for shits and giggles. I literally only spent a couple of minutes doing these calculations. So please excuse the crudity of the model. Didn't have time to build it to scale or to paint it. So let's go through these back of the envelope calculations or back of the post-it note uh, calculations, front of the post-it note calculations. Um, each satellite, each Starlink satellite has uh, 33 square meters of uh, solar panels. I got that figure. Um, that's most of the satellites up there. I think the newer version that they might, I don't know if they're sending them up yet. I don't know. I'm not up on my Starlink tech. But anyway, uh, the number I got was 33 uh, square meters of solar panels, but there's no exact figure. So these are like industry guesses. And I haven't checked, but I just just assume that these would be, you know, the best space rated uh, quad junction gallium um, uh, arsenide uh, solar panels that you can get. And those space rated solar panels, they're more efficient than our terrestrial counterparts here. Um, so you can get up to 460 watts per square meter is the figure that I got. Um, so that gives you, uh, times 33, uh, here gives you a 15 kilowatt uh, production figure per satellite. Now, of course, there are 7,000 satellites uh, currently orbit. We're not going to go with how many they plan and all that bullshit. Currently got 7,000 satellites up there. So that is a total, multiply 15 kilowatts by 7,000, that's 105 megawatts total power. 
That's not a bad power station, is it? 105 megawatts. Okay, let's see what we can do with this. Right, um, so uh, due to the orbital dynamics, right, these things are spinning around the Earth. They're not always going to be visible. Same with the reflect orbital problem. Uh, they're not going to be always visible to uh, the sun, right? So um, uh, this actually reduces the capture time by 50%. If I'm wrong there, leave it in the comments down below, but that's a figure of that I found somewhere. Um, so, um, so we have to halve that figure of 105, uh, 52.5. Let's just round it to a nice figure of 50 megawatts power capability. We're not going to be talking about energy. It's just how much power can this thing capture and then transmit. Okay, transmission side of things, we've got to have some sort of whiz-bang microwave transmitter thing, right? Won't go into any technical details about uh, any of this. You can argue uh, till the cows come home in the comments down below. Um, but I found a figure of about 20% tops um, is like kind of like the best you can expect from this sort of like satellite, you know, energy transmission, you know, orbit um, to uh, Earth uh, transmission. Um, efficiency. So 20%. So your 50 megawatts is now down to 10 megawatts. Oh, okay, what can we do with 10 megawatts? Now let's talk in terms of uh, power consumption for things people know about. Your average house here, right? Average house, right? Let, let's just say like 24 kilowatt hours uh, per day divided by 24 hours. Let's say the average house takes an average right? Not talking about peaks or anything, but just an average power of one kilowatt uh, for every hour of the day, right? So an average power of one kilowatt to power your average home. Okay, if you did that, you could power 10,000 homes. That's pretty good, right? Yeah, but mm, how much do the Starlink satellites cost? Uh, about, like, once again, we don't really know, but the industry, best industry guess is about $250,000 uh, per satellite. Don't know if that includes launch costs and all the rest. It could just be, I don't know. It probably does, right? And it, whatever. Molten, that's the best figure I can find. If you've got a better one, leave it in the comments. Multiply that by 7,000 satellites. It costs $1.75 billion to deploy that Starlink uh, system, I'm pretty sure it costs more than that, but we'll just run with this figure. We'll be generous, okay? Like we are in all these uh, debunking type uh, calculations, right? To give us our 10 megawatts, we've spent $1.75 billion. So what happens if you go, well, that seems pretty pricey. What happens if I just put 10,000, put solar panels plus batteries on 10,000 homes instead of powering them from these bloody Starlink satellites. Well, I just assumed a rough cost. Once again, debate in the comments down below. $25,000 for a typical solar plus battery installation. None of that, uh, you know, government uh, subsidy rubbish or anything like that, right? Let's just say $25,000. That keeps your home powered um, like, you know, like all day and all night uh, kind of thing on a good day. Eh, we won't go into the details. Remember, this is back of the envelope stuff. So $25,000 times 10,000 is $250 million. That's a lot of money, but I'm pretty sure that's a lot less than $1.75 billion. In fact, it's seven times better than $1.75 million. But we also have to in, in like factor in the lifespan of this thing. So um, if you've got a solar plus battery solution, um, the solar panels can last 20, 25 years easily. The batteries, not so much. So let's just give it an average uh, life here of 15 years for the home solar and battery before you have to uh, replace. You might just replace the battery after that. Solar panels could still be good, but whatever. We'll just run with that. Once again, we'll be generous towards uh, this, okay? 15 year uh, life versus a five-year life on the Starlink satellites. They have to replace them every five years. They're in low Earth orbit. They can't stay up there for very long, right? All their fuel's expended to keep them thing, and they just burn up. In fact, there's like a real-time, some guy's got set up like a real-time thing, hasn't he, on his website somewhere that um, shows exact which satellites are currently burning out of orbit or something like that. Anyway, um, so three times seven is 20. It's 21 times more cost-effective to simply at least at least, because we've been very generous. 21 times more cost effective. Just, just just, put the bloody solar panels and batteries on each home than it is to try and launch some whiz-bang satellite system and then try and capture the solar energy up there with your super efficient solar panels and then beam that down to earth. Because look, even right, right off the bat, 
like you don't even have to go through these calculations you just like right off the bat you go okay well uh, you know space-based solar panels everyone talks about how efficient they are and everything okay they're 460 watts per square meter your average ones that you put on your roof um, down here on earth um, they're about 250 uh, watts per square meter something like that right for your good ones so you know let's just say that space-based ones are twice as efficient okay they're not quite but let's just say twice as efficient as uh, what you can get on um, earth that's great but then if you lose your, your transmission efficiency if you lose if you can only get 20 percent transmission efficiency you lost five times your energy you, you, right off the bat you don't even have to run the numbers you just go well there's no point you know it doesn't it's never free to put stuff in up in the space it's one of the most expensive things we do um is to put things up in space so um it doesn't matter how efficient your solar panels are that you're just going to get eaten up um and more in cost by your um efficiency of your panels here so like it, it's, it's just dumb right off the bat you don't even have to go any further but anyway yeah at least 21 times more cost effective to just stick them on your roof unbelievable anyway um yeah that's fun for shits and giggles Thoughts and comments down below. Catch you next time.